So we're going to be discussing about building that collaborative classroom. It's not just about how you have a conversation in teams, it's about all the other things we can use, including flickering with short talks over there. You will know that if you uh, have been following social media or anything else like that, we made a whole host of announcements before Beth started about improvements to Teams. I won't cover all of these, but I wanted to highlight some, and there are more, so go see the Teams guys over there. We have now released great sync and sync back to NISs, so we get that double data entry. We've got a new assignment experience, and we'll preview that as we go along in there. We've now released also mobile grading for people to be able to grade assignments, on the move, so if you're in a boat, you're a mobile job, or you're traveling somewhere and you're not about to do that, then you can do that. Turn it in integration, so create assignments, <coughs> turn it in, check it for plagiarism, and then it'll give you a score and show you what it's like. Also other people like Caldor will do that. And last but not least, it's really exciting, those make code assignments. So make, use make code to create an assignment for students to start talking about STEM, etc. within that. So, let's dive into Teams. Hopefully you've all got Teams open in the, uh, the bar at the bottom there. And we're all going to go into Teams now. We're going to do some things within that. Oh, something to change my screens. Look at that, we'll survive. The trick is, don't let other people use your device. Yes. So, here we are in Microsoft Teams. Okay? I'm going to create a team first of all. So you're going to need to be able to go to that join or create button at the bottom. If you all click on that, you'll see that you have an option to join by code, and that's going to be useful in just a second. So I'm going to go to create a team first of all. I'm going to click on create a team, because I'm an owner in here, and I'm going to create one that we're all going to go into. As soon as I do that, I get four options for teams to be able to create. One is classes. Classes is the only one that offers me that assignment experience. So if you're looking to work with your students, push out assignments, mark them, etc., classes is the one to go for. The second one is the professional learning community. If I go in here, it's a place for me to work with my colleagues, do research, talk about different projects, share information, use OneNote in here, for example. Really, really powerful. And we'll look at one of those very briefly. Then I get a staff members team, so this is a, a fantastic team to be part of if you work in a, in a department or a department head sets it up as the first instance, and then you've got people with OneNote, staff note behind that as well. And last but not least, the anyone team. I'm going to go and create an anyone team. And it is Friday at 2.30, so that's one of the team, in this instance. And I've created a team. That's brilliant, but there's nobody in it. So I need to start adding people to my team quite quickly. I'm just going to click on that O button first of all. You know, it matches. Let's try D. There we go. Uh, so I click on the D button, and I can see all the people that I can add into my team that are currently in my tenancy. So in this instance, I'm going to add in Deborah. I'm going to choose Add, and she's now in my team. That's great, she's a team member. And it's going to take me a little while if I want to do that in front of the class and I want to get it done quickly. So this is where the join code part comes. Right, right, if there's a team, I click on the three ellipse next to the team over there. I'm going to choose manage team. I'm going to jump into settings. And I have what's known as a team code down here. Okay? If I click on that generate button, it's now generating me a code that you can all join with. So I'm going to make a big on the screen for the moment to let you all join. This can only be done on the devices in front, so if you're following along behind on the devices, do apologise, it's tenancy based only. Okay? So if people start shaking their heads to be back there, I'm sorry. So now we'll get everybody joining, and as I see pairs of eyes looking back at me, I'll know that they're all joining our team. We'll give you a couple of seconds. So very quickly now. So, coming back to this, we're now out uh, of that. Everyone will have joined my team from here. So what else can I do? I can reset my code if I would like to. I can remove my code and I can copy my code. If I really want to copy it, I might want to put this out and share it with a wider audience. So I might share it on SharePoint, I might share it in uh, an email or something like that. Just say, uh, if you want to join my team, I'd like you to be part of this. 
But nine times, nine times out of ten, I'm going to rebuke it after that first lesson because I don't want any other students joining my team for my part. So I'm just removing that code now. Now, if I jump back to the general channel, you'll see oh, people have already started. Fantastic. Let me just go to the top there. Those. There it is. I wanted to be able to show the list of people that have joined the team very, very quickly. So in under six minutes or so, I've created the team for everybody to join. I've now got my whole class in front of me in the same environment as we've been able to work with me. Now I want to be able to say, okay, the general channel's great, but I'm going to go and create a new channel for you. So we're going to add a channel in here. I'm going to call it Playground. So this is going to be an area where you're going to go and have a chat with different people now. I didn't play with that channel, and I should have, so I do apologize. I should have played with it for everybody. But find that playground channel. I want you to now go and introduce yourself to somebody else in the team. It doesn't matter, but it's not really necessarily you. You've all got alter egos in here today. Go and start by saying hello, welcome to the team, nice to meet you, all those sorts of things that we did. They're good, somebody said tick. So we say tag. Okay, so we start to build up that conversation. So I can say, hello. Hello everyone in the team. I could press enter now, and this is going to then just leave a comment that says hello everyone in the team. But I'm not really directing my comment to anyone very much. So if I want to do that, I need to use some of the app features. Uh, and by that, I mean I need to use the app side at the start of my conversation. How many people use app and Outlook for Teams already? Or have had that explained to them about how it works? Brilliant. If you don't use it, it's very, very powerful to be able to direct a message at someone. So if I do at, and I then want to get uh, Deborah, for example, and I want to talk to Deborah in person, I do at Deborah, it's signifying that I've got something to say to you. So I'm looking at you through my computer, it's coming out the other side, and you're going to have that message with a notification based around it. Not only can I mention Deborah, but if I try and then add the channel, it's going to pick up the playground channel that I've got in here. I could have more channels, I understand that, we'll bring them all up. I can name the channel, I can do at playground and it will bring it up. But I can also add mention the channel. Last but not least, I can also add mention the whole team, which is the Friday 2.30 team. Okay? So that's my notification for everyone. I want you to take note of what's going on. I'm going to do that with the Friday notification there. And then it's going to notify everyone with a little pop-up on the left, uh, bottom right that I've said hello to everyone in the team. And I am part of Azure in this case. Okay? So people have started those conversations. Some people have started quite a rich conversation in that they've added in some emojis, you can add in gifs, etc. I don't think I've ever been able to put one of those in yet, normally we do. But you can add in gifs or you can add in stickers and have some different things in there. It's your choice if you have that bit turned on or off with students so that they can or can't do that. If I want to create a subject around the chat, which again is another powerful way of doing it, if I wanted all English features that were in a big team to be able to be notified, I create that subject, I still work through it in exactly the same way, and let them know what's going on. There's somebody adding one in now. Okay? I can put links into here. Really cool feature if you're, any of you are computer uh, scientists or anything like that. I can take code, I can copy it in here, and it'll keep the same markup code based around what I put in here. Okay? So that's nice to be able to share that if people want to be able to do it. I can upload files. You can go look at where I want to upload from. I've got Reason, I've got Teams, I've got OneDrive, etc. etc. So quite a few different things that we can do. So we've been able to then just create that team really quickly, be able to use it, and pick up what we wanted to do. So then, I want to show you that staff collaboration team that we spoke about just very briefly in there. So this is the Pine View School District Principals team that I'm about to look into. And you can see that in here, I have a slightly different view across the top. I've got conversations, files, and what's called a PLC notebook. So every time you create some teams, you can create these notebooks, which are all embedded into teams and you can make use of them. This is loading my PLC notebook. It's also then giving me some information about what a PLC notebook is, if I don't know. 
I can then make it larger and find out what sections in there, and also what sort of pages are in there. So it goes through what your goals might be, etc., etc. I added an extra uh, section in, which was called Professional Development, and then Triple Fed First Century Learning Design. You can see my screen's getting quite condensed with all the stuff that's open in there, so we've got a really good feature which will maximise the, the space that I'm allowed to use. So I'm going to maximise that space, I click okay. into the page, and now I've got text that will span all the way across for me, and I can see it much easier. I can easily open the sections again, and I can also then go back to that minimise view so that we can then see how that works for us and what we want to do. The first third party app that I've talked to a bunch to talk about is I've added in um, something called MindMeister in here. So this is where we start to get powerful and bring extra things in. Where do we get this from? Well, we've got a store button on the bottom there. But if I click on the store, it brings up the store and everything else that's involved in it. Loads of things there. I have not time to go through them all, unfortunately. But we do have an education tab. And in that education tab, you can see some of our partners are in there. We've got Flipgrid, who just came over. Quizlet will touch on. I mentioned Aldor as well. We've got Lifelike just over here behind us. So lots of different people that are already integrating with teams, working with teams, making that one experience that's really powerful. So I have it in my mind, sir, just to give you an idea about what that looks like. And I'm working with my colleagues here, and in this instance, I've started something called Teaching and Learning Tools. So it's a really simple mapping tool that anyone who's in here in my team would be able to go into and add to. So I started in the middle there, I went out to communication, went there from communication to expression, verbal, or verbal, etc. I think you get the idea about how you can build that up quite quickly. Again, it's very, very powerful and simple to be able to use. So let's go and be part of our team. At the top, hopefully, you've got AC class in VET 2019. So that's the teaching team that we're going to be in, where you're all students. If it's not at the top of your list, and you want to put it there, if you click on a team and hold it down, then drag it up, I can reorganize my team wherever I like. Okay? So I put mine at the top there. It's also favorited for me. If it wasn't one of my favorite teams, I could remove it. And it would end up in the more section down at the bottom. So there's my more section of the teams that I have available. Right? So let's go into the general channel. Again, a couple of just differences as we go in. We still have conversations, we still have files. We now have class notebook instead of a PLC notebook or just a notebook. We also have the assignments tab, which hasn't been visible until we've gone into a class team. And you have all those same tabs across there with you as well. And you can see that I've sent you all an assignment to do later on, which is called the final assignment six. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So if I click into the class paper, and this is exactly the same as you said of the staff team, you can see not yet what we're going to. Again, we've got some welcome introduction notes, we have a collaboration space. We have a uh, content library, but I also have a section for all of you in my OneNote class notebook going down here. And if I open one of those, for example, Adele, you will be able to see that we've got some sections that were predefined when we set this up by just clicking one button and choosing what we wanted. This time we put quizzes, class notes, handouts, and over. I could have changed that for wherever I wanted. It could be section one or syllabus A, etc., and create those different bits and then pages within it. So I've got the idea is that if you set up homework, the student can say, well, I haven't turned it in, or my dog ate it, or all those sorts of things that we do experience. If they've started it, you can go in there and have a look. They could say, well, I got halfway through and I got stuck. Fine, go and have a look at it. And embed that with them and have a chat with them about how they're currently doing. So that's really powerful to be able to use in terms of keeping tabs on what students are doing, where they make notes. What happens if I want to distribute something though. So I've created my own section, my own channel, uh, my own page. I can distribute to the whole class with a click of a button. Distribute page, distribute section. Really, really easy to do. So if I've created a page, I want to release it on a certain day and a certain time, I just click on the page you want to, and I can distribute that page. I can do cross code for the distribution. So if I have three classes doing the same thing, I want to send it to all three classes, I can choose to do so. It's a very, very powerful thing to be able to do with the class 
fantastic look at sights. I said the view has changed and it has. This is just a new view of looking at a siding when you first get there. You can see my assignments that we're going on the start of the road. So we went from final to final two, three, four, five, and six, as I keep reusing these assignments for the group to be able to do. And it says that these are upcoming ones. I can also use the three ellipse to find out if I've got any draft assignments that are waiting to get assigned, and I currently do have two. And if I add it into a graded, they would appear down at the bottom there. Okay? So that's very, very simple. I'm going to click on one of these untitled assignments because it's an easy way of demonstrating the way that we've got uh, assignments set up in here. And it allows me to choose a number of different things as I go along. First one, if I've got a number of classes again, I can distribute this to every class that I teach and so deliver math to three different classes in the same cohort. I can distribute to all three at the same time. So if it's an end of term assessment, they can all have the same amount of time to do it and then turn it in. I get the option then to choose which students I might want to distribute this to. Currently the default is all. But say I had some students that I needed to make sure I was, I was taking account of their needs for. I could change my assignment slightly. I could go in here and I could select those four or five students that needed a slightly different assignment and send that one to them. So I'm differentiating with my assignment, my outcomes, my beginning scholars, and making life really easy. So I've got those powerful bits there. I can do a title, I can add a category. If you start to categorize your assignments, you're better tagging these assignments, it's going to start to build up based around what you have, what, uh, what you can then go and search to find later on. I can do instructions. I can add resources in here. I don't just add documents though. This is the place where I come when I want to add something from a class notebook. If you want to add a link, any URL I can get, I can add in here that people can then have. I can add a new file, so everybody starts with a file, blank file that I choose that they have in. And this is where the make code part comes in. And this is where we're going to be expanding over the next few months, years, etc. to allow people to come in there. Then I've got a few things I can decide up here. I can do a date due, time due. The time due is important for students to organise themselves when you help them organise themselves. If it's due at 9 a.m., set it for 9 a.m. so they know they've got a deadline to meet. If I had one due at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., they would align themselves up underneath each other so I knew what I had to have in when. That makes life really simple for me. I could choose when I want to schedule it, could be now or later, based on whether I'm pre-prepping some of these things in advance. If it's not now, then I get to take that one away. The late handed one is also interesting. Lots of people too tend to turn that off, so no late handed. As soon as your assignment deadline's passed, it disappears, they can't do anything. So there are some students that might have uh, some circumstances that stop them from handing it in on time. If you leave it on, you get notification, hand it in late, date and time stamps, you know how late it was, it allows you to follow up with them later on. Last but not least is the points part. In this, I get to choose whether it's out of a number of points and what it looks like. And I mentioned that turn it in integration there can either be on or off depending on whether you're using it. Then we get the add rubric button at the bottom. What a fantastic way to be able to share what your outcomes might be. I could build a rubric from here that goes excellent, good, fair in this instance. It's all changeable, but you can build the success criteria, share it with students, and then mark on that for them so you can add it back. Let's look at your assignment though. So let's come back out of that for a minute. If you could all go to assignment five, that's assignment five for me. At six even, sorry. And if you can open that assignment and take it, it's a quick quiz. Five questions, really simple, not too challenging. If you're stuck at all or can't find it, just pop your hand up, we'll come around and show you where it is so you can take that assignment. So, I'm asking people to take assignment uh, six at the front, so I'm just going to click here and show you that this is what it looks like at the moment. Nobody's currently turned it in yet. So when we get the first one turned in, oh, real, thank you, Marsha, very quick there, 80 points, okay, on that. Um, so Marsha turned it in, so as more and more people turn it in, you'll see that it's you, okay? I'm now going to look, so this is auto marked, it was out of 100, so they've got 80. I now want to see what the questions are like, what the responses are like. So those at the back that weren't part of that, you can now see that these are our questions. When's Halloween? 
straight forward. Pop that Christmas ball in. Fairly straight forward. Ah, you must need to get that one wrong. Well done. Well done. Uh, I put, is it raining outside? All things I've not been outside for a long time. I made the right answer, maybe. But I've only get red crosses. That's what most people trip them on. Well done. And then a math question in there, because I can ask you to do math functions as well. The last one, which tries to get uh, 100, is because it asks me to mark this based on our answer down here. So we've got five stars, so I might give 20 points. And then when I want to return that to the student, they'll get the feedback based on that, the fact that they got 100 points. But I don't maybe just want to do that. I want to leave a bit more feedback. So I have all these comment buttons here, which I'm proudly hiding. Move them up a bit. And I can give a comment on the whole quiz here. Okay? If there were questions wrong or I want to say well done, okay, I can go down to particular questions and I can also leave a comment in here up to a thousand, uh, thousand characters. Sorry. Okay? And then I can send that back to the student, they get notification if they're marked and they're getting that feedback from us. So very, very powerful and simple to be. I can look at the results also in a number of ways. So here I've added a tab. This tab looks at the assignment from the set. It's given me simple numbers or a pretty simple dashboard based around what that was, what it looks like, who's got it right, what did most people say. Thankfully, most people said that Christmas got in December. And so you can see where people have voted on that. And this was from one earlier on in the week. So raining outside, eight have chosen maybe, 17 no, and zero chose yes. So they were unsure as well. And many people got that hat question mark. So that's a really easy way to look at that assignment. So if I want to see those grades overall though, when we go back to the new view of grades uh, assignments, I've got this new grade button up here on the right hand side. If I click on that, it's going to offer me the opportunity to export either one assignment data or all assignment data to an Excel sheet. So if I click on export to Excel now, it's quickly going to download this for, um, for me and I'm just going to open it very quickly. And you can see that I'm getting first name, surname, I'm also getting email address, I get the name of the assignment, how many points those students scored, what it was out of, and whether they've then been given any feedback based on what we have. So I'm building up a markup for this team that I can then use. Now Great Six is going to help massively with this because it's going to allow it to go somewhere else back into another system if you're already using a data system. But that's an easy way to look at it and find out how your students are doing. So what do we do after we've been able to create some assignments, we've been able to look at some of those things? We've got five minutes left to do some things in here. We talked about at mentioning a person, a channel, or a team. We can also at mention our third party apps that come into here. And one of our own ones is Forbes. So if I at mention Forbes, okay, and then I want to ask it a question that you're all going to be able to answer, hopefully. Uh, is it ready outside? Question mark, we'll do yes, come no. Press enter. And because I've made it into a question with that question mark and then a yes, comma, no, all has got away and created me a simple poll, if you like, that you can now answer. So if you're on your device, you've got to answer in there, you can do yes or no. You've got people answering straight away. It's instant feedback for me. When might I use this? If I'm teaching, I'm partway through my lesson, I get a glazed look for students sometimes, and I want to say, I want to check learning. So here we go. I'm going to check the learning for these students. Five people and six people are saying training outside. I still have no idea if it is training, so I do apologise. Um, but it's seven stroke four there. Who else can we use? Well, we've got a great one called Polly, which I think is really uh, powerful. And I can do exactly the same with that Polly. Polly, real. So I can do Polly, and I'm going to do exactly the same question just so you can see what it looks like. Slightly different in the way that it's designed. Okay? You still get the same idea to submit those votes. You can do yes or no, submit your vote, you can even add a comment. Okay? 
they could be along the line, stop asking silly questions about it, so it makes life really easy. But I'm getting people voting. I get percentages here. I get names of students here, which can be good, or you may not want that. So if we go to the poly tab at the top, I can see how many polls have been created in this team, who the authors are, I've done eight, spoke to a poll eight, authors, etc, etc. And I start to get some good feedback about lots of the stuff that's coming. Where does the power come in this one? It comes in to create a new poll. This allows me to create something that I can schedule. I can allow for a time frame of days or hours or weeks that people can reply to. But not only do I get that one choice of question, I can now look at different questions like open-ended, multiple choice, etc, etc. The last bit I think gives you that option is I can make those responses anonymous. So if you don't want to show names in your classroom, get this anonymous responses and follow up later. I might not even want to share the results, so I might want to hide them from people. Let's move across some of these other um, things in here. I mentioned Flipgrid. If you've never seen it, here we go. Bet 2019 intros, I called this. I made my own Flipgrid wall. We should all go into there, start recording up to 90 seconds worth of video and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, blah, 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 or you did a great presentation today, but I think you could do better doing this, okay? And it would build up across our wall um, and we'd all be able to see that. If you want to see more of it, go see the guys over there because it really is worthwhile We're going to see. What I do like is glossary. It allows me to sign in, two seconds. This allows you to build a bank of key phrases with your own class. You can then say, right, if somebody you think it's a key phrase, get the students to put it in. They can add their own key phrases to it. Here you can see I've got one under C, which is close. I can see there's one under D, because it's highlighted, destructive way. If I want to look at the wall phrases there, we can start to look at those as well. So it's something that's really powerful and simple for them to be able to do. We have a Moodle integration. Anybody using Moodle in the audience? Okay, shan't spend too long, but if you want to know more, catch me at the end. I'll show you quickly what it looks like. I do all the guides is here. No, not yet. Um, it might take too long, so I can take people around. There we go. So if you create Moodle courses, used to seeing them, here we go. We've got the whole Moodle course into teams for students to be able to look at, tick off things that they're doing, etc. So it brings it all into one place for them to be able to use. It's now three o'clock and they're running for the top off. So last but not least, if I go back to my conversations, we've talked about bringing third parties in. I can do the at sign, and I can start to try some of the things that are in there. So let's do Lifeline, one of our partners just over behind us here. Let's search for something to do with Hydro. If I search Hydro, it's going to all the science stuff that they've got connected with Hydro. I can go up and down. I can grab hydrostatic pressure. Open it in the web app. I can even put it into Teams and ask them questions. But the time, I'm going to get told off. Maybe, maybe not. No. Yes, yes you are. Oh no, please no. It's going to bring in some great 3D objects into here. Exactly. There. there we go. There's a 3D object. I can now move that 3D object around. I can look at different parts of it. I know I'm rushing it, so I'll stop and I'll go back to my PowerPoint. So, we've done lots of things. I must do this bit very quickly. Go find out about some of those bits. If you want to learn more, I'm here tomorrow as well, or you can go to the live uh, theatre booth at 3.30 and you'll pick up on some of those new parts. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Teams, take a photo very quickly, or can we catch you on my screen in a minute? I'm going to talk off. I'm going to end it there, but come back. I'll have it on my screen over here. Last but not least, who uses Microsoft Educate Community? Surely more of you than that. Come on, get your hands up. Free training for teachers. Go log on, use my code, get some points, learn how to use Office 365, Teams, etc, etc. And on that note, I will finish the story. Round of applause for you, Alan. Thank you very much. Also, take note, guys, this is quite informative as well. If you like what he had to say, we have a nice collection of synthesised information in Dark available.